Hey guys, so in this video we're going to discuss another topic that everyone asks me about, but there seems to be no other videos on it. The topic is how to become a more consistent player. The keyword here is consistent. In my opinion, consistency is what defines and separates an amazing player from a good or a decent player. It's what separates the best players in the world from other professional players. A perfect example of consistency is Ghost Bizzle. Bizzle is currently at the top of the Fortnite earnings list with over $500,000 earned from lands and online tournaments. When we look at his placements history in tournaments, we can kind of get a sense of why he's so damn good and consistent. Interestingly enough, Bizzle's only won one event, but has placed second in five events, and then top four in two others, and top ten in another. Bizzle is the Fortnite embodiment of consistency, and hopefully you can see why consistency is so important. If we look at another pro player, like Morgoss for example, he's also a very good pro player. He won PAX West and actually beat out Bizzle, who came in second in that event, and earned $250,000 at that event alone. But the thing is that Morgoss just hasn't been as consistent as Bizzle, so while Bizzle has continued to dominate and place top 5 in nearly every event that he's played in, Morgoss has come up short. And you guys have to realize that Morgoss is still an amazing player, but he just doesn't have the same consistency to get acknowledged as a top player like Bizzle. The funny part to me is that Bizzle doesn't even have insane or flashy mechanics like Mongrel or Thwaifo or Mr. Savage. I'm not saying that Bizzle is bad mechanically because that's just not true, but when you watch him, you never be blown away with his building or editing. So how does Bizzle do it? What makes him so consistently good? And most importantly, how can you become a more consistent player? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'll quickly throw up some timestamps for different sections I cover because I think a lot of you guys appreciate that, but let me know if I should keep doing it or if I should just stop doing them. Anyways, the first thing you need to do to become more consistent is to work on your game sense, plain and simple. Your mechanics are obviously important, but if you're able to build proficiently, as in just doing protected ramps and just building when you're getting shot at, game sense will help you far more to be a consistent player than your mechanics will. 90s are obviously cool to do and to flex on your friends in 1v1s, but realistically, how many times do you use 90s in game? It could be in a scrim or in an arena match or just a normal pub, whatever the case is, or however good you are, you can get away with not being able to do 90s as fast as Mongrel. What you'll need no matter what game type you're playing or your skill level is game sense. I've talked about game sense so many times in my videos, but that's just how important it is. When you watch Bizzle play, he never hesitates to make a decision. He always looks like a man on a mission, knowing exactly where to go, when to rotate, and how he's going to get there. This doesn't mean that he always makes the right decision, but his awareness, his positioning, and everything else that encompasses game sense helps him consistently make the right decisions rather than the wrong ones. Learning game sense is the hardest part of Fortnite and even a ton of pro players struggle with it. I can name like 10 players off the top of my head that would probably beat Bizzle in a 1v1 but wouldn't last more than 5 minutes in a pro scrim. My advice to learn game sense is to of course watch my series on it. It's the only game sense series on YouTube right now. Uh, I also advise people to drop somewhere like Haunted where nobody else will drop then loot up and play for the win. By doing this, you'll just learn which engagements to take, like if you're in the middle of zone in third circle, there's a good chance you'll get third partied if you're fighting someone. You learn when and where to rotate, so if the zone moves across a hill or onto a hill, obviously the first thought should be to get onto the hill. On top of that, you'll also hopefully learn to not only think ahead in game, but also in fights and use your brain to outplay people. If your mechanics aren't that good though, and you're struggling to do things like ramp rushes, then you should be working on your mechanics first. But for most players looking to become more consistent, you definitely need to be working on your game sense. My next tip to become more consistent is to minimize your RNG. RNG is a randomness in the game, like opening a chest. You can either get a gold scar or a white AR. But Jerian, you can't minimize RNG. Battle royales are full of RNG, so that's impossible. If Fortnite is so RNG, then explain to me how Bizzle consistently scored 30 and 40 points in the Winter Royale qualifier. I know there's going to be hundreds of comments saying how can you minimize RNG when you land and you don't get any loot 3 games in a row. The answer is really pretty simple, just stop landing at the same houses where you don't know a chest will spawn. This is what Bizzle does so well compared to most players. If you guys didn't know, floor loot and chests have spawn rates, so if a chest has an 80% spawn rate, that means it will spawn every 8 out of 10 games or every 80 out of 100 games. Your favorite house in retail row might always seem to have a chest in it, so you might as well take the gamble because it's always there when you land there, right? No. What Bizzle does to minimize RNG is simple. In tournaments and lands, he drops a dusty divot. He's dropped there so many times and practices drop spots that he knows exactly how high or low he should be to drop in before everyone else no matter what route the bus takes. On top of that, Bizzle knows every single chest spawn and floor loot spawn and divot. 
This means he knows exactly where the most loot is concentrated and where to drop so he's not likely to get screwed over by a bad chest. To minimize RNG, you should always be trying to land on floor loot. If you see a white silenced SMG on the floor outside a house, land on it. Don't land on the roof of the house where there might be no chest at all, or there could be a chest, but you're gambling for the chest to get something good. Would you rather 100% chance of a silenced SMG, or a 40% chance of no gun, 40% chance of white infantry rifle, and 20% chance of getting something better than a silenced SMG? I'm not saying that you need to be dropping in the same POI every game, but if you're trying to win the game, you should know the chest and floor loot spawn locations of where you're dropping. This also helps if someone has a better drop on you and beats you to a house. Instead of trying to 50-50 them off spawn, you can just land at a different spot where you know there will likely be loot. What can sometimes be even more RNG than loot is engagements with bad or even good players who just don't have any game sense. How many times has the next zone been across the map and then you've gotten pushed by some clown and then both of you end up dying to zone? I could give the cop out answer and say, oh you should have rotated somewhere else, but unlike with chests and floor loot RNG, you literally have no way to know if some goon will run up on you and push you in storm. That's why you see pro players saying it's easier to play against other pros than it is to play against worse players, because pros will make smart decisions and go to zone. You have absolutely no clue what little default Johnny is going to do. One second he's not building, and then the next second he's hitting you in the face with his pump for 200 damage. To help minimize RNG within fights, you need to treat all enemies the same. Don't ever underestimate or overestimate a player. Underestimating will make you play sloppy, and overestimating will make you play scared and not play to your full potential. Lastly, you need to make a decision and stick with it. If little default Johnny is pushing you in zone but you see a hamster ball nearby, you have to full commit. Don't just sit there thinking about it and wait for him to make a decision for you. If you don't have enough health to make it out and you need to kill him, again, just go for it. Go for the unexpected trap play, try a quick edit and re-edit using the mouse scroll wheel edit I show you guys. By doing this, you can minimize the RNG and possible outcomes as when you commit to something, you should know what can happen after. Either little Johnny claps your cheeks or you get out alive, but sitting there and not making up your mind and then dying and complaining about RNG isn't going to help you and it isn't going to make you a more consistent player. Second to last tip to becoming more consistent is just staying calm and not choking fights. You guys wouldn't believe how many times I've been asked how to stop shaking at the end of fights and how to not be nervous. There's no real secret to staying calm or a trick that can just instantly make you a stone cold emotionless killer. But the process of becoming less nervous and choking less fights is actually pretty easy. You just need to put yourself in those situations more. If you're only used to playing squads with friends, you're obviously going to be very nervous and shaky when you get to the end of a game in a solo. You no longer have people to rely on, you desperately want to win to brag to your friends, and most importantly is you've barely been in that situation before. When I tried to get my first few solo wins, I was just as nervous or probably more nervous than you guys were. My arms felt like wet noodles and you just seem to miss all your shots because you can't keep your mouse or your thumbstick still. It's normal to be nervous. I still get nervous in scrims and 20 matches and so do a lot of pro players, but as I get more experience and put myself in these situations more, I'm no longer as nervous. You have to keep playing solos, getting to end game and I guarantee you'll be less nervous and shaky after you play and gain experience in like 15 matches or so. The butterflies in your stomach won't completely go away as it's a long process, it'll take weeks or months, but you just need to practice and gain experience, there's no easy way around it. To bring it back to Bizzle, this is why we see Bizzle consistently on top. The dude's like a robot in Fortnite endgames because he practices those situations for more than 8 hours a day. Obviously, you don't need to play even close to as much as that to become consistent and less nervous, but it's just proof that you'll stop choking with practice and experience. The last thing I want to say to help you guys become more consistent is to learn from your mistakes. I see a ton of people saying that they can drop 20 kills one game and then they die off spawn 6 games in a row after that. Other than everything I've already mentioned so far, the problem is that they haven't learned from their mistakes. They're likely dying to the same thing each match, whether it be taking the wrong peak or just building up too high or taking the wrong fight. They're trying to repeat their actions from the one match that they dropped 20 kills in, but that won't always work. To be consistent, you can't do the same thing every match and never take away anything from the games you die in. The most effective way I've found to stop making the same mistakes is to take out a pen and a piece of paper, and every time I die, just write down three things. What I did wrong, what the enemy did to kill me, and what I could have done differently. You'll notice if you're an inconsistent player, the mistakes you're making will be consistent. If you're consistently dying to third parties, you need to learn from that. The solution to that would be to end your fights quicker, as in killing them faster. If you can't do that, you just need to back off the fight, or lastly, just be more aware of who's around you and where you are in the map. If you can't understand why you died in a certain situation, go into replay mode and spectate the person who killed you. This will tell you a lot about your play and you'll see maybe if your building was sloppy or if you were taking bad peaks. 
write it down and take a look at the piece of paper before you decide to play in arena mode or the upcoming world cup matches and you'll find yourself going back to it while you're in the middle of fights and in game if you die consistently trying to push people in the middle of zone maybe this game you should just rotate and build up on high ground instead obviously it won't always be that simple but the point is still important write down your mistakes and learn from them so overall, to be a more consistent player, you need to improve and work on your game sense, learn to minimize your RNG, put yourself in stressful situations to gain experience and stop choking fights, and learn from your mistakes by writing down why you died. So if this video helped you guys, please be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. This video shoutouts go to HyperFury, MorrisCG, Saucy, Ryanzax, Sweaty, Kikin Nomaki, Vidiot, XD Alex, Critical Galleth, Crazy Z, Clapsies, Nedin, Armadun Galve, Bipi, Yug Yug, It's Pharaoh, Clown Food, Roelino, and Daniel Gonzalez, who all use my code in the item shop. Face reveal will be out on Tuesday, boys, so get hyped. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.